we have to find forces. When do we start with, you know? When do we start with equation of motion and solution of problems? So what uh, sir is teaching is the theory part as well as in problem, but how to apply that theory into the practice for the practical problem is my work. So hence just start. Let me share it again. So 
are defined or are specified and we have to find forces so this is feed forward one type of problem the another type is the other type is where forces are specified and we have to find the motion so in this what happens difficulty depends on the form of the force function So it can be force of T, S, V, A, time or displacement. Or velocity or acceleration. So it can be those. And the solutions are found out by solving the system of differential equation. So as compared to uh, algebraic equation, we now are solving the differential equation. So uh, for type 2, for simple problem, or for simple functions of this force function, uh, we can find the cool close expression. but but the problem becomes very hard when these functions are nonlinear in time as well as space as well uh, so what happens that there is no closed form of the solution and we have to then resort to numerical methods so 
so now there are two kind of motion one is unconstrained motion and one is constrained motion There are two kind of motion, unconstrained motion and constrained motion. So in first, motion of the particle is determined by its initial motion and forces from external sources. happen in the constrained motion so motion of the particle is partially or totally determined by the restraining guide which is other than its initial motion and the forces from the external source. So those things, those uh, restraining guides are called constraints. First one, as the name suggests, the unconstrained motion, so it is free of constraint. But in the uh, later case, what is happening? All forces both applied as well as reactive. So because of the constraint, the reactive forces come into the play.
those are those are the additional constraints which are uh, which must be accounted for this neuron law okay so here only neuron laws are there but here reactive forces as well as uh, additional constraints which we call as uh, constraint equation so those are there So here three equation of motion can do the trick. number of degree of freedom and equations are reduced regarding to the type of constraints so these constraint can be equality constraint or inequality constraint also and these constraints have different forms and can be classified into non-holonomic or holonomic depending on the situation or the cases given so we are not going into those things as it is a part of the advanced dynamic course only but that all comes into the contact mechanics Now coming to the free boy diagram. So call so forces uh, acting on the particle. <coughs> need to be counted in the equation of motion. What do this uh, free boy diagram do? Everybody unveils every force. That acts on the isolated particle So first step is to draw the FBD and then, then we can find equation of motion. So 
no uh, before everybody also the choice of or the appropriate coordinate system because this will set as the base or the reference of whatever we are calculating so first of all that is to be defined and it should be consistent No, uh, this treatment of the body as a particle is valid when the forces may be treated as concurrent through the mass center. So whatever the, what we are doing is we are taking the whole mass and we are lumping into a point where its mass center is or center of gravity is. Now we have questions coming up. So this is question one. Where the coefficient of static friction between the between the flat bed of the truck and the crate is it carries is 0.3 determine the minimum stopping distance as that the truck can have from the speed of uh, 70 km per hour with the constant the acceleration of the crate is not to slip forward so Let's first study the whole scenario. So we have this truck. And so first let's draw a surface. Let's take this as a surface on which the this uh, truck is traveling. So let me change the color to some green. 
okay so this is that surface where truck is traveling and uh, okay. so let us bring that truck back remove the markings so this is a truck So this is a truck and going like this and then suddenly it kind of break at this point and it says a truck break at this point And then it starts to it starts to stop so it was here and then suddenly like before that it was just going to this full speed and then suddenly it stops at some point okay so let's say that some point is some somewhere here that was breaking point and this is stopping point this is the full picture this being the breaking point and this being the Stopping point. Now, if we draw this truck as a FBD, we will have this. Now, the condition is uh, like if the grade is not to slip, okay, because. Here is the coefficient of set coefficient between the flat plate. So this is given as mu mu static 0.3 and we have to find the minimum stopping distance that the truck so that s s we have to find so let's denote this as s now this s we have to find So at this point the truck had the velocity of seventy uh, is it kilometer per hour? Kilometer per hour. Now it is having the constant the acceleration and if the crate is not to slip forward, okay? So no slipping allowed. So let me write that down, no slipping allowed. So we generally take M, uh, G as 10 and mass of the truck is So 
we have uh, different scenarios. What are those scenarios? If grease is not equal to slip, mean that friction So now we have to find minimum stopping distance. in x direction is equal to mx so if we look at that it will be minus 0 0.3 mg is equal to ma and ax it gives ax is equal to minus 0 0.3g we are assuming it to be constant for minimum distance now using v square is equal to v naught square plus 2a s minus s naught we get 0 is equal to 70 square uh, 70 into 10 by 30 
This gives us F is equal to 64.2 meter square. Now, the thing is, uh, if the truck comes to the stop from the initial forward speed of 70 km per hour in a distance of 50 meter with a uniform deceleration, okay. Now determine whether or not the crate strikes the wall at the forward end of the flat bed. If the crate does not strike the wall, calculate its speed related to the truck as the impact occurs. Use the friction coefficient mu s equal to 0 0.3 and mu k is equal to 0 0.25. Okay, now we have taking same photo. Taking the same photo. Now we know that stopping distance is fifty. This S is equal to fifty meter. which is actually less than uh, 64.2 okay so therefore we can say that crate is slipping because that's the limit if uh, it is longer than this then uh, the, there will be less deacceleration but here the acceleration is more which gives that it breaks the limit hence create slips so now using v square minus u square or v square is equal to v naught square plus 2a S minus S naught. So using this formula, we get acceleration of the truck into 50 not 64.2 50 so this will give us this, this will give us the acceleration of the or de acceleration of the truck because this is negative minus 3.781 meter per second square
and using the other formula v is equal to v naught plus a into t minus t naught this will give the stop for time at which it will reach the t stop so which comes out to be 5.14 second now we know that friction force Fs is equal to 0.3 mg, which is equal to 2.943 m. And this is static friction, kinetic friction will be equal to 0.25 mg, which is equal to 2.45 m. Here m is not meter the mass let's say uh, we are assuming that crate and trucks are going side by side That is a of a of truck is equal to a of crate for some part. So using f of x is equal to m a x using this formula we get. This is the required friction. Which is equal to M three point seven eight one M and it is greater than the F of S. Therefore, the crate slips. and f is equal to f caps the kinetic friction so minus f of f k is equal to m a great which is where a great now comes out to be minus 2.5 2.4 removing the mass now if we say acceleration of crate as compared to truck or respect to truck so if you wanted to find out this so if you want to find out this relative acceleration so this can be done by simple relative motion formula
So actually, instead of deacceleration, the crate will now experience an acceleration in the forward uh, direction, forward direction. Okay. Therefore, the crate flips forward. Now, question is, will it strike the wall? So wall is at uh, 3 meter from it. So the question is, will that strike the wall? Now using S equal to S naught plus B naught minus B naught plus half A T minus T naught square so we are kind of relative finding the relative motion calculation this gives us 3 is equal to half into 1.331 into t square which gives us t strike at which it is moving 2.123 second okay which is less than t stop Therefore, crate will strike the wall before the truck stop. Now, um, did you find everything? Calculate speed related to the truck as the impact occurs. We still have to find one thing, which is relative speed. So let me create some space around here. So let me create some space around here. We still need to find the uh, relative velocity so, okay now we are finding that relative velocity by using formula v is equal to v naught plus a into t minus t naught when we apply this we get V of crate with respect to the truck relative velocity which is equal to 0 plus uh, the relative acceleration is 1.331 into 2.123 and which comes out to be 2826 meter per second in my uh, notes okay so so let's complete our uh, let's say question two now coming to question number three
it says if the coefficient of the static and kinetic friction between 20 kg block which is a and 100 kg card which is b are both essentially the same value of 0 0.5 now determine the acceleration of each part for uh, let's say p is equal to 60 newton and then p is equal to 40 newton so this 3 has two parts 3a and 3b so here is that Let's solve for A, which is when P is equal to 60 Newton. Now, we can see in this figure, when P is equal to 60 Newton, we have N A is equal to 20 g f max is equal to 0 0.5 n a which will be equal to 98.1 so we can say this that n uh, is less than 120 newton therefore this block a It moves forward relative to B. And if we apply this force value, So this will give, give us 120 minus 98.1 is equal to 20 so acceleration of A which comes out to be 1.095 meter per second square now uh, 98.1 is equal to 100 A B. So this gives us give us the value of acceleration of B as 0 0.981 meter per second square. Okay. Now part B. We say that uh, P is equal to 40 newton. So here F max comes out to be. greater than the 80 Newton therefore block A does not move related to block D or the cart and B move together so this is 80 into 120 A where A comes out to be 0 0.66 
seven meter per second square. Now you can find the developed friction. You can find the developed friction by isolating FBDs. Assumption is valid. So F amount to be hundred A So this complete of question three. Now moving to question four. a short break.
ओके लेट्स कंटिन्यू तो इन नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन वी हैव अ सिंपल पेंडुलम व्हिच इज पिवोटेड एट ओ एंड इट इज फ्री टू स्विंग इन द वर्टिकल प्लेन ऑफ द प्लेट नाउ इफ द प्लेट इज गिवन अ कांस्टेंट एक्सेलरेशन ए अप द इंक्लाइन थीटा write the expression for the steady angle beta which is assumed by the pendulum after all uh, initial start up oscillation have ceased now we have to neglect the mass of the cylinder supporting rod so very tough question to design uh, so we have this steady state fvd so when everything is steady the vibrations are, are tied out so this will be the case yes can make a correlation between them now coming to to only this fbd and balancing the vertical forces or um, forces in the y direction we get the equation t cos beta minus mg cos theta equal to zero and when we balance force in the x direction so here m e x so this will give give us t sin beta minus mg sin theta is equal to m a so we can find beta using two these two relation so we can divide the equations and we can easily find this beta angle so this completes our question number 4 now coming to question number 5 now here we have two blocks and for the friction coefficient mu is equal to 0.25 and mu k is equal to 0.20 we have to calculate the acceleration of each of the body and the tension t in the cable so again drawing the fbd now first of all we will write out the short Uh, relations such that so let's take the whole length b l so s so this let's say Plus L. So this will give us S A plus T 
2 of s b plus c is equal to l which directly gives a of a plus 2 of a of b is equal to 0 now as you can see n is equal to 60 g cos 30 degree m and f of max is mu of s of this n which comes out to be 127.4 Newton we assume motion impends block A so this gives us F is equal to F max and equilibrium will be Sixty G sine thirty degree minus F of uh, F max minus T is equal to zero. So this gives us T is equal to one six six point nine Newton. But this cylinder B uh, will not be in equilibrium. Since uh, 20 G minus T to T is less than 0, so it is moving up. Now assuming block A slides down, so block A slides down and block B moves up.
our question 5 now moving on to question number 6 so it says that a bar of length bar of length L and negligible mass connects the card of the mass capital M and the particle of mass small m. If the card is subjected to a constant acceleration A to the right, what is the resulting steady state angle theta that the freely pivoting bar makes with the vertical? Determine the net force P which is now shown here that must be applied to the car to cause the specified acceleration. So, the car is moving with acceleration A and uh, drawing the FBD look like this.
So this will be the equivalent force. So now uh, starting question number six seven. Here it's asked that uh, determine the acceleration of bodies A and B and tension in the cable due to the application of 250 Newton force neglect all friction and the masses of the pulley so instead of uh, 300 So this is our FPD. So before going that, we can first write the relationship. So of F of A, how much A will go? Plus 3D of F of B plus C is equal to L total length. And which corresponds to 2A of A plus 3A of B is equal to 0. Now taking force in the horizontal direction. So these are the two equations and uh, from this A, A can be find out minus 2, 3, 4, 2.34 meter per second square. A, B can be found out as 1.56 meter per second square and D can be found out 81.8 newton. Okay, using uh, three equations so this is first equation then this is second equation this is third equation okay three equations three variable now solving for question number eight I think question number eight what does it say? So we have uh, this slider A and B which are connected uh, by a light rigid bar and move with negligible friction in the slot. Now both of which lie in the horizontal plane and for the uh, position shown in this question the velocity of A is 0 0.4 meter per second to the right now determine the acceleration of each slider and the force in the bar at this instant. So we will be needing uh, FPD, so we will just put FPDs. Now 
this is kinematics 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 this is triangle 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 OAB S of A is equal to S of B and 0 0.5 equal S of A cos 15 degree plus S of B cos 15 degree so uh, this gives us that S of A is equal to S of B equal to 0 0.2588 Oops. And similarly L square is equal to S of A square plus S of B square minus 2 S A S B cos 15 degree or cos 150 degree sorry cos 150 degree so so if we if we can differentiate it With respect to time, L square is constant and it will be 0, S A will be 2 S A B A plus 2 S B V B minus 2 cos 150 degree and here S A B B plus S B V A connection Waiting for the connection.
Okay, we are back in action. Hmm. So differentiating differentiating with respect to time will lead, will get us this, and we have given that v of a is equal to 0.4 meter per second. V of p is equal to minus 0.4 meter per second. And if we uh, differentiate it again. get 0 is equal to from now here e p e square plus s a e so like one term is converted to two terms now v b square plus s b e into a b minus cos 150 degree into S A A B S B A A plus two B A B B. So this will lead us zero is equal to zero point zero four two eight seven plus zero point four eight two nine a of a plus zero point four eight two nine a of d now going back to kinetics forty minus t cos 15 degree is equal to 2 a of a and t minus minus t cos 15 degree is equal to 3 a of a a of t and we are putting this into 1 so this gives a this is 1, this is 2, so from equation 1 and 2, we get the final values. So this is 3, 2 is this. This is 3D and first equation is this. Now moving on to question number 9. Now with the block initially at rest, the force P is increased slowly from 0 to 260 Newton. Now we have to plot the acceleration of both masses as function of p. So all the data are given. And this is our scenario. Whatever is given, I will first write that. Na is given as 35 g. 
एन बी इज गिवन एज एन ए प्लस फोर्टी टू जी इज इक्वल टू सेवेंटी सेवन जी एफ ऑफ ए मैक्स इज इक्वल टू जीरो पॉइंट टू एन ए विच इज सिक्सटी एट पॉइंट सिक्सटी सेवन न्यूटन एफ ऑफ टू जीरो पॉइंट वन फाइव एन ए एन बी एंड दिस कम्स आउट टू वन वन थ्री पॉइंट थ्री न्यूटन एफ ए काइनेटिक is equal to 0.15 and a which comes out to be 51.5 newton f b q is equal to 0.1 and b there are three uh, possible situations so first is no motion then b as well as a b and a move together and b and a move separately now to mention two impossible situation also those are beam is alone because what will happen since f a will not be equal to zero so a will move eventually and second a moves alone this is case p1 p2 p3 this is i1 and i2 so why a moves alone since a p is applied at block b and it forces now uh, starting with case 1 we say that p is in between 0 and fb max so 
So what will happen that FB will be developed. which will cancel with the applied P. FA will stay zero. So there will be no motion. That is A of A will be zero and A of B will be also zero. So this is P1. Moving to condition P2. Now let's assume both A as well as B go together. So therefore f of a is less than equal to f of a max and f of b is equal to f b k. Okay. Now balancing the force, this will lead us that f of a is equal to 35. A and P minus F of A minus F of B K is equal to 42 A. Now at P is equal to P min equal to F B min P max sorry. which is increased slowly A is equal to 0 0.49 meter per second square. So this gives FA is equal to 17.16 Newton. It's like jumping. Now add F a is equal to f a max it is just about two slip P is equal to 226.6 Newton and A then becomes 1.962 meter per second square. Now between these extremum values A will be is equal to P minus FP by 77. So this is a linear function of P.
therefore f b max will be less than p settled between the f b max and 226.6 newton so here what will happen that a a is equal to a b which actually varies which varies linearly from 0.49 to 1.962 meter per second square Now next uh, we have done P2, P1, now coming to P3. Which is A slides, the two backward. Relative to B. Since increasing P makes B बोला वो है तो क्या चीज साफ करना नहीं 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 इसको ठीक है हम कागज एक कागज ले लेंगे कोई मेरे पास टेन मिनट्स का और बचा है टेन मिनट्स का और क्लास बचा है उसके बाद हम जाएंगे डिनर द रीजन वाइल ए क्लिप्स So f of a is now f of a kinetic and this gives us f of a kinetic is equal to 35a and p minus f P minus L, P kinetic minus F of B kinetic is equal to 42 AB. So this gives us KA is equal to 1.47 meter per second square, which is constant. of P equal to P minus 127.04 by 42 and this is also a linear function. So therefore to 
we have a is equal to 1.47 meter per second square which is constant and then 2.37 to 3.166 meter per second square jumping okay how all it will look like it will be something like this A of A up to some point it will be 0 and then it will start so let me mark it by some other color so from 0 it will be from 0 to at this point Similarly, the equation of B will be also something like this. Then there will be a jump, a sudden jump. Then there is a linear relationship. And after that, again a jump. And then this become constant, but this keep on increasing. Two point three point seven. So we'll end here. Thank you.